Um, hi, so uh, my name is Eugen Bertke. So I'm I'm a beginner in 3D printing. So and in today's talk, I would like to tell you what if um, what it is like to run a big and cheap printer so at home. So and first of all, um, what is a large and cheap printer? So. Um, on this slide, I have a table with the best uh, large printers I found. So, in my opinion, so a printer is large if one of the dimensions so is over 400 millimeters. So, I think that uh, the size uh, it is the size where a printer becomes unwieldy. So, and if you look uh, at the table, there are two printers under one thousand dollars. So, with so one of them is a trunk C. So. And uh, uh, reality, but the trunk C it has the cheapest price per cubic um, uh, cubic millimeter. So, and uh, I got this printer. So, and uh, uh, we can see as on this talk, if it was a good idea to buy this printer. So, um, here you can see some specifications. So, this is a trunk C X5 SA Pro with a volume of 500 by 500 by 600 millimeters and as you can see from the dimensions this is a monster cube with a weight of 26 kilograms so it has a core xy kinematics at the bowden extruder so i will show what is what is it so in the next slides so <clears throat> and the speed is uh, between two uh, 20 and 150 millimeters per second. It is an average so speed. So and you can print PLA, ABS, TPU, and PEG as a filament with it. So <clears throat> these are the beginner's filament. So for better filaments, you, you need a better printer with a closed, um, so with, with a uh, closed chamber. So and. Um, uh, what is a core XY kinematics? So, um, a core XY kinematics has two stepper motors. So, they are attached to the printer frame. Um, so, and uh, they control the position of the of the uh, carrier edge with two belts. So, so, oops. So and um, how it works? So if both motors move uh, clockwise, so the, the carriage move move to the left side. So if both, both motors move uh, counterclockwise, the carriage move to the right. To the right. If the uh, motors uh, move to opposite opposite to, of each other. The carriage move uh, towards and away. And if one motor moves, the carriage moves um, in the diagonal. So and the point is, we can uh, reach uh, every position. On the, on the um, uh, uh, hotbed, so with, with uh, this uh, technology. So, and what is the Bowden extruder? So, on this slide, I have a, also a picture of of it. So, <clears throat> and the main purpose of the Bowden extrude, extrude is to make it, is to make the print uh, also to, uh, the print head light uh, lighter. So with this technology, the extruder motors is attached to the printer frame, and not to the printing head. So and a stretch resistant but a flexible tube goes from the extruder to the printing head. So and the job of the ex extruder is to push the filament through the tube, so into the print head, so with a very high force. So, so and in the print head, the, the um, uh, filament is melted and can be distributed over the print head uh, hotbed. So. Um, this makes the um, uh, printing head lighter, but um, it, 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 it makes the um, filament slower to respond. So if, if, you, if, if you print, <clears throat> so um, we um, need to do more uh, retractions and uh, pushing the uh, filament to the tube. So and uh, this make can make the printing a little bit slower, and with, with this uh, kind of extruder, we cannot print all materials, especially soft and flexible materials, as they cannot be printed with this uh, kind of uh, extruder. 
So uh, let's move to the challenges of the printer. So, and one challenge is the installation of the, of the uh, uh, printer. So, and of course, you, ha you have to think about where do you want to place the printer. So the printer is very huge. Uh, it's so huge that can, you can put it on the table. You probably have to leave it on the floor. So, so, and even in a large room, it takes a lot of space. So, and you should be prepared. You have, you have to keep it in mind before you buy this, such a printer. So, so and um, what I found is that this print, uh, printer requires a mounting on so solid objects. So, it, it turns out that uh, 26 kilograms is too far too little weight for such a large printer. And if you don't mount it anywhere, it, it, it vibrates, especially on fast printing speeds. So, and this has a negative impact on the printing results. So, <clears throat> so uh, what I did, I have it, it, uh, temporarily attached it to my desk. So, and so, and I, I'm thinking about to fix it on the wall or something. <laughs> so, and there's another challenge and um, for big printers is the, and it is bed leveling. So, first of all, why do we need a good bed leveling? So, so and um, a good bed leveling means the, distinct, uh, that the distance between the nozzle of the printing head and the heated bed is constant and any position so, and uh, it is re repeatable. So if you start a new uh, printing processes, it will start from the same position over the uh, printing head. And it, it, this is essential. So uh, because so, um, it, it, it is required for a good filament adhesion at, at, at the first uh, layer. So it, so, <clears throat> Because so, um, the, the filament it will stick better if you have the right uh, distance from the build plate. So and there are other factors. So, for example, um, so to achieve a good bed leveling, so it, it is important to have a good. Uh, proximity is a sensor, so that uh, makes sure that the uh, printing head so uh, s stops at, at the right distance at, um, above the build plate. So and and we, we uh, need a good heated bed. So because the uh, heated bed they so if 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 they're heated they can expand. So and uh, they can get some de deformations. So this is especially important for uh, large printers so so uh, this is a picture from underneath of my uh, printing head uh, 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 build plate so and so uh, what I, I noticed so um, I have a very very low quality uh, uh, build plate so and if I hit this um, uh, uh, build plate, it, it deforms. So it, so it uh, almost impossible. So, so to achieve that your nozzle is over your uh, print uh, building plate at the same distance. So, and another thing, so at uh, cheap printers, they have uh, mostly inaccurate uh, leveling as well. So uh, proximity sens sensors or uh, bed leveling sensors. So, so that means that um, the nozzle stops at different uh, distances if, it, if, if, if you start a new process. So, so and uh, uh, what happens is that we uh, get not, not, not enough, so uh, our uh, parts uh, don't stick enough to, to the build plate and they can get loose. So and then, so and, and another thing of, of the um, uh, build plate is very thin. So it, it's 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 made of some aluminium alloy. It is unknown. So I don't know what 
uh, what the material is, but it's very thin. It bends if I um, if, if if I apply some pressure on it. So and um, again to the pictures and uh, the manufacturer. Uh, he tried to solve this problem by um, making more po as of fixation points on, on the build plate. So, on my build plate, there are six of them. So, but um, it, it, it doesn't solve the issue. But but it makes the labeling of the <clears throat> of the printer so uh, more difficult. So. So. <clears throat> So and test uh, another third challenge is the is the um, is the controller. So and the controller um, has also has some serious weaknesses. So at this time it has nothing to do with the size of the printer, but with the cheap components. So I guess um, the, the manufacturer saves some money on on some parts. For example, one cheap and noisy motor driver was built in so uh, there's nothing wrong with um, other drivers for the x y and z axis they are very good but the one extruder driver is really crap so, and it makes the whole board to crap so and the driver makes the stepper motor very noisy that you can hear the printer from other rooms so and unfortunately this driver cannot be replaced so, because it's sold up to the board, so and so that means there's no chance to get rid of the noise. So, and the board is crap, so, and you, you you cannot even change the parameters of the of the firmware where to reduce the noise. So, and um, my advice for the beginners would be to have a closer look at the compo on the components. Because you can get easily get uh, such a board that, that you throw away <clears throat> months later. So, and the third challenge. So, I, so it's, uh, I have no heated chamber on my printer. So it is. So and without the heated chamber, so there are some problems so the first problem is that without the chamber uh, the warm air rises and the cold air uh, cools the hot bed so, and the hot bed um has to heat so it um, yeah it uh, consumes a lot of energy so it, in times of climate crisis this is not good so and <clears throat> no heated chamber means that uh, Many filaments cannot be printed. So, for example, I cannot print nylon and polycarbonate. So, because they require uh, some ambient uh, temperature. So, but at some point you want to print these high-quality filaments. So, and and uh, I, I would say so. So, uh, um, you you need a heated ch uh, chamber at some point. So, so and another advantage of a heated chamber is um, that such a chamber would also suppress the noise, so it would um, make the printing even more ple uh, pleasant. So. so, and some filaments um, or especially uh, large parts. So they uh, need a chamber. So as I said, the and, and uh, polycarbonate. So they, uh, if you uh, don't use a, a heated chamber, as so the, the filaments so, or the parts build up so much internal stress, uh, so, it, so, so they will end up in warping or they come off of the plate. So. <clears throat> So, um, I think I missed a slide here. So, because I I modified my um, printer. So, um, and what I did, 
so I solved these problems. So, so, so some of them. So. So as I said, I, uh, so my printer is f fixed to the table. So okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's uh, s uh, skip the modification I did. Also, but it, it, it was interesting. Okay. So sorry that I missed the slide, but um, I plan to do some modif uh, further modification. So I plan to build a new heat uh, heat bed. So I plan to uh, replace my three millimeters so <clears throat> aluminum hot bed with um, uh, ten millimeters aluminum hot bed. So it is um, <clears throat> uh, made of special so material material. So it is insensitive insensitive to heat so it is uh, very precise so this is um, my next project so and the plan to uh, build so a heated chamber so that uh, can I reach as so temperatures up to 80 degrees so to be to, to print iron and polycarbonate so, so and um, what I learned from um, <clears throat> my experience so I learned that large printers are special devices and they are made for special purposes. So, um, what I noticed is that I, um, so in 99%, so I don't need such a large printer because, but I need a printer that's around so, uh, maybe 200 millimeters by 200, uh, 200 millimeters. So, it is enough so, for, for most uh, parts. So. And I learned that the, that the cheap printer can become, become expensive because you have to do a lot of modifications so to uh, make the printer usable. So, so and have some recommendations for, for, from uh, for the beginners. So if you are uh, unsure, so start with a, a small printer. So because so you probably don't need. Uh, such a large printer. So it's a waste of money, so it's uh, difficult to maintain, so modification co costs a lot of uh, a lot of money, so it, they are difficult to do, so and so. <clears throat> and if, if you can, so um, uh, get a printer with a heated chamber, because um, mm, <clears throat> You, so the, the, begin, the beginner will be as a, at uh, at some point so very fast that um, he needs some advanced uh, filaments for for, for 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 his projects so and then so he has to, to buy another printer or to do some complicated modifications so so it's better to buy so a better printer so a small a good printer so then a large and a cheap printer. So that's what, what, what I learned from my experience. So, so thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask. I think so I, w I would have a question, um, Eugen. So from your experience, yeah, so you, you made these modifications, but overall, were you satisfied with your printer? Uh, yes, uh, I thought about this. I'm satisfied. So I'm. I do not regret that I have s s such a large uh, printer. But um, but uh, um, the bad uh, thing about my printer is that I've, I spent a lot of time so for, for modifications, and I spent uh, less time for my projects. So this is a, a very good printer. So as I said, so I do not regret that I have that. I, I learned a, lo a lot by, by doing the, the modifications. So this is um, a benefit maybe. So, but it's it's not a beginner printer. I, the, uh, so, uh, so people do, do, don't need such large printers. So. Okay. My, my second question is: Would be what, what kind of objects do you typically print with it? 
what are your biggest projects with it and so on? Oh, the, so mostly the, 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 some uh, cases or some. Um, actually, I have some pictures. <laughs> um, I would say I, I print uh, mostly cases for, for my. Um, Electronic devices from motors or from exper experiment for my experiment experiments. I recently did my experiment with um, some magnets. Maybe it's here. No. <laughs> so and I needed the case for for the magnets and so. Um, yes, th I think that's it. So and I built my. My shelf, I, I, so, and I needed some parts for for my shelf, so that I cannot buy, so in a, in a store, so I, I just print them. So it took several days, but it's, uh, but I, I did it. So.